computer, yes. All right, so welcome everybody to uh, the Saskatoon Ukulele Players February Uctorial. Um We're doing the blues today. Um, and I hope this is gonna be the first of a series of uh, uctorials because there's a lot of things to learn uh, with music in general, with the blues. I mean, you can just keep adding more information and stuff. So um, if you just bear with me a moment, I'm going to bring up our package. And I just realized that I haven't changed this. I'm going to start with, I think we should start with some music first. So I, the first song that I put, everyone can see the screen, right? Should be looking at flip flop fly. All right, is that visible? Can you um, make it a little bit bigger, if possible? I'll That's good. To, I'll have to end up scrolling oh. a little bit, so. Oh, okay. That should work, though. Yeah, that's good, yeah. You can right. pinch your, your own screen and just make it larger on your own by just touching and opening your hands, and your own screen will be larger, too. On the... Yeah, you go up to view options and just pick. I'm on a tablet. I just touch the cords and then I use my thing, index finger and my thumb and just make it a span it larger and, and it brings it out and in. You can do that on your screen when it's her? Yeah, but I'm not on a computer. I'm on, yeah. on a laptop. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. If, if you're, you're on, on computer. On laptop, yeah, you're I'm on a computer. computer. Yeah, on computer, oh. you go to uh, view options at the top. Do you see that? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. and then um, use the zoom ratio fit to window. Oh, okay. And, and you can make it bigger. Oh. I've often used 150%. Oh, 150. And then she can have it small enough not to scroll, and you should be able to see it all. Oh, okay, except I have to scroll, so... Sorry, Patty. Yeah, no worries. No worries. It's it's not a problem. Like I said, because I've got the tablet next to me, it shouldn't be too too bad. We'll try it out and see okay, how it goes. Let's, let's, so uh -huh. this is uh, first of all, I'll make sure that everybody is muted. Uh, I hear one person not muted. Who's not muted? Oh, it's me. Oh, I'll yeah. get it. <laughs> no worries. No worries. All right, so let's just get ourselves warmed up with a little bit of flip flop fly. Uh, let me just get the mic away from my mouth so you can hear the U. And yes, I am using my low G U. Uh, you don't have to have a low G U for the blues. I just like that little bit extra beefiness to the sound, but use whatever you have. Now when I get the blues, gonna get me a rocking chair. When I get the blues, I uh, get me a rocking chair. And if the blues don't get me, gonna rock or run away from here. I said, give me a kiss, hold it a long, long time. Say, give me a kiss and hold it a long, long time. Now love me, baby, till the feeling hits my head like wine. Play it, flip, flop, and fly. Don't care if I die. Flip, flop, and fly. I don't care if I die. Don't never leave me, don't ever say goodbye. I said, get in a girl. Sorry, I can't read lines. When I get lonesome, I jump on the telephone. I call my baby, tell her, get your little son back home. 
like a Mississippi bullfrog sitting on a hollow stump. Yes, a Mississippi bullfrog sitting on a hollow stump. I got so many women, I don't know which way to jump. Keep it on that seat while I go up a little bit. I said, flip, flop, and fly. I don't care if I die. I flip, flop, and fly. I don't care if I die. Don't ever leave me. Don't ever say goodbye. Let's try that chorus one more time. I said flip, flop, and fly. I don't care if I die. I flip, flop, and fly. I don't care if I die. Don't ever leave me, don't ever say goodbye. All right, how did that go for everybody? Easy, right? So, let's go back to the top of this. So I hope you were kind of paying attention a little bit to the lyrics, or not to the lyrics, to the chords, to the chord progressions, because that's what we're talking about today. We are going to talk about that 12 bar blues form. And the reason is, is it is one of the most common blues forms that you hear. Um, so many classic songs, uh, and I've got a few of them here right now uh, that we're gonna do today, but so many classic songs follow this pattern. And it's an easy pattern. It's uh, when you learn it, it's one that you could just walk into, say, any blues jam. They'll say 12 bar blues in F. And you'll know right away what to play and how to follow along. So uh, it's a great one to learn. And like I said, it's a good way of teaching a little bit of theory as well. So let's go through the theory stuff, which I know sounds incredibly boring, but it's not. It, I find this, maybe it's just me. I find this incredibly fascinating. So what we have here is, uh, oh, that's interesting. You can't actually see my pen as I go. So your first four lines is gonna be what's called the root chord. Sorry, bars. The first four bars is what's called the root. Or sometimes we, we put it as uh, a Roman numeral I, one, right? So in flip flop fly, and feel free to unmute yourself and shout out the answers as I <laughs> go. So in flip flop fly, what was our root chord? What was our tonic chord or our number one chord? C. 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 Yeah, it was C. Oh, C. Okay. So we did yeah, okay. four bars of C, right? And then what was our, so after the first four, four bars, we went to what chord? F. F, right. So that's our fourth. If you count, if you look at like say a piano um, and count four from C, C, D, E, F. F is our four. Yeah, I hear somebody calculated it. Oops. Right, you got to F? And then we ended up going back to our C for a little bit. What was our five? G. G. And then, so we went G for a bar, back to F, and then we finished off the, the uh, verses and chorus with the C. And so Patty, I have one question about that. So go in the case of flip, flop, and fly, we went to a G7. Yeah. So could we go to, in another arrangement of a different song, could we go to a G minor or, or a G whatever? Or is it just, you've got a, just sort of a little wiggle room there or how does that work? So yes and no. Usually if you're minor, go away now. You're Sorry, in a I wasn't saying going away to you, I was saying go away to the drop. Yeah. Um, there are so many different variations. Uh, now with Flip Flop Flight, you're right. This was a, oh, come back, draw. You're right, this was a seven. Can you see my writing? No. Yeah. Yes. 
I added no. a little seven there at the V. No. It's in red. Yeah. Really? Oh, so some people are seeing it, some people aren't. I see it. Well, you look at the left-hand column of three and look one and then below that is four and below is the V for five. That's just, where it, that's yeah. where it's written. See it, Pam? Oh, now I see it. Yeah. 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 Okay. It, you don't see it if you look at the hole. You have to look real carefully. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just kind of threw that in because where I got this diagram from, yeah. it was a little strange that they don't have the sub in there. Um, but honestly, like, and what I have written here is it can be all different things. You can have uh, the entire song done in minor. You can have uh, the entire song done in seven. Uh, there are variations to this. So one of the variations, I was just double checking one of my books. They throw in an extra four here. And I'm just getting used to, to writing with these pens. So yeah, uh, excuse me. So they'll do a four back to the root, and then they'll do a four, seven. Um, ah, interesting. There's so many different variations. Okay. The reason though okay. I chose this particular diagram is because it is the bare bones minimum standard. Form. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's very helpful. Thank you. And uh, and it is one of those things. Like I said, you know, like this theoretically, we should be able to play by ear, but you have to have a good ear. If you just get up at a jam with people who've been jamming for a long time <laughs> and you're, you're playing something and all of a sudden there's these chords that are coming up, you know, like variations are there and you have to have a good ear, but you're still looking at your one, four, five. No matter what else people are throwing at you, an extra little flourishes, it's always going to be that four, one, four, five. And one thing that this diagram doesn't show is uh, the turnaround. So there is usually, that's a very drunken V. A lot of times at the end of the, you get that five, seven back. The reason being ah, is that yeah. it circles around. And we refer to that actually as the, turn around oh and many times in blues you'll hear people yeah. um i can't i can't even remember how to do it on the ukulele um oh yeah, yeah. you know like that yeah. that's where you can start doing some of the funky things and honestly um if these tutorials go the way i hope they do I would love to do just an entire tutorial on turnarounds because there are some fun and catchy stuff that you can yeah, yeah. do. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. let's let's get the basics done and this is the yeah. best place to start. Mm -hmm. So we already talked slightly, oops, I'm using the mouse even though I'm supposed to be here. So we talked slightly about what the Roman numerals mean and um, I set this up in a way so that you can always have this document separated. Um, it's very simple. If you're doing a song in C, you're looking at the C major scale, like I have it here, C, D, E, F, A, G, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. <laughs> Sorry, I do know my scale. You know what you like, meant, yeah. <laughs> um, and so if you assign numbers to each degree of your scale, this is what you get. Now, the reason why some are uh, like in small and some of them are in, in the capital is a lot, it's complex. I'm just kind of learning about it now. Don't worry about the reasoning for it, especially since for the purposes of our discussion, you only need to know your one, your four, and your five. Right. All the ones in capitals. But what comes down to, for example, um, maybe next year we decide we want to do some tutorials on jazz. Well, the uh, four, or sorry, the two, five, one is actually huge in jazz. You hear that oh. everywhere. So it's like a minor D, minor D, D minor, uh, maybe a G7 and a C you're gonna hear those chords 
through a lot of songs and you don't even realize it. But, you know, for me as a jazz musician on the saxophone, that's something that I have to learn to practice is just going through chords like that so that I can hear it. Now, what I've done to some of my students, uh, so the F major scale, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and then obviously our um, octave there. So if I said, we're gonna do a blues in F, just based on this scale here, what, uh, what is gonna be my root chord? F. F. F, exactly. So this is my I. And what's gonna be my fourth? So we're gonna do- B flat. Uh, B flat. We're gonna do four bars of F, and then we go to B flat. B flat for a couple bars, and then I go back where? D. I go back to D? D. Oh, pardon me. Yes, D, yeah. Well, I do my, my, two, my two bars in B flat. Let's see. And then F, I'm going sorry. back to what chord? F. F, F. 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 For a couple bars. And then everybody already shouted out the five. Where am I going? G. Five? C. 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 And actually, I would probably do that as a B7. B7, and then my B flat, and back to F. Perfect. So you see, as boring as it is to learn scales, it can be handy. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. did, did you say that the, that the five chord would be the G or the C? C. Yeah. And it would likely be a C7, right? C7. Thank you. Um, it sounded okay with the C, actually. Oh, you made the C look like a G there because oh, you made C7. Sorry, sorry, that's my bad that's rating. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get away with much. <laughs> C, I know you I'm going to put the seven in here. Does that look yeah, good? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> That's an artistic G. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because I've been trying to learn calligraphy. So maybe maybe by the time we get to the end of the, all these blues tutorials, I'll have some yeah. fancy stuff up there. So yeah, we're going F for four bars and then we'll do the B flat. Back to F for four bars. And then that C7, which you can play anywhere you want. B flat, F. So. It's easy, right? That makes perfect sense. What if you don't know your scales? Then you count on your fingers. <laughs> yeah, you can count on your fingers. Um, so you have to write it down like that. <laughs> yeah, sometimes yeah. it's easier to write it down. Um, but I mean, if, if I said to you, I'm going to throw it in here. Uh, what if some horrible, horrible human being says, we're gonna, and there's my bad rating here. What if some horrible human being says, we're gonna play in the key of F sharp? Ooh. Yeah, yeah <laughs> then you're gonna be sitting there going G sharp, yeah. G -sharp. It's a very, very painful key to, to figure out. So there's another way you can actually kind of cheat a little bit your fingers? He uses a circle of fifth. Welcome oh, to the circle oh, of four yes. slash fifth. Um, oh, okay. Key of F sharp. Honestly, this is something that I have in multiple places in my music room because oh. sometimes it's just easier to look at this. So for the time being, oh. don't worry about the inside circle, the A minors, all those minors. We're just gonna concentrate a little bit on the outside here. Yeah, yeah. That's all the major stuff. <laughs> oh, why do I have fourth <laughs> slash fifth? Well, it's quite, quite simple actually. Irritating, but simple. Let me just move my little thing here. Fourth if you count fifth. this way. Fifth. C to G, we already talked, is a fifth, right? 
So you're going up by fifths. Oh, that's horrible writing. Whereas oh, yeah. if you go yeah. from G to F, you're going up by fourths. So yeah. you'll hear those terms interchangeably, circle of fifths, circle of fourths. Oh, all depends on the okay. direction you go. Okay. That's, that's all. So don't panic if you hear one term when you're more familiar with another term. What's cool about this is you can take any spot. So remember, I was kind of joking about this awful key down here, the F sharp G flat. You can take that and figure out very easily, oh, yeah. Yeah. right? So if we go clockwise, right, we're at fifth. So this is our five chord. That's our one chord. And this is our fourth. Oh, right. Remember we did F. Oh, oh okay, okay. We talked yeah. about F way mm -hmm. up here, where we said our F. If that's our root chord, then our B flat is our fourth, and our C is the fifth. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Look at this. So if you go this way, it's the fifth. So that's our fifth. Okay. And you go this way, you go counterclockwise, and that's your fourth. Oh, okay. So this is why I find this incredibly nice to have, um, say, on my wall. Uh, when I practice scales um, on my saxophone, I literally just go, you know, I'll start on one of these scales. I'll start maybe with the C. And then I'll do my next scale in G and the next scale in D, next in A, and so on all the yeah. way around. There's another really, really awesome thing, though, about the circle of fourths. And what it is, is that it's easy to figure out how many accidentals you have based on the position. Oh. So uh, let's choose a different color here. I don't know what you mean by accidental. Uh, sure. Like sharps and flats. Okay. So our C is all natural. I've been having trouble drawing naturals lately. I don't know why. Well, that's good. That looks pretty good. And yeah. depending on, I do find you have to kind of remember the first one. But once you've got the first ones down, you can figure it out easily. Yeah. Your G actually just has the one sharp, yeah. right? A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Our D has two, A is three, and you just continue all the way That's down. Cool. Five, and I'm gonna ignore this awful mess here. And <laughs> yeah, you can tell I really hate that. And when you get, to this side, so let's get back up here. Your F is just one flat, and then you've got your two flats, three. Yeah. That's supposed to be three flats, <laughs> four flats, five. So there's so much information packed into this little bitty chart. Um, and it works too, by the way, the, the accidentals work for your minors. So the relative minor of uh, C is A minor. Again, it's all naturals. E minor is the one sharp and then two sharp and so on and so forth. And this idea of figuring out your, your uh, one, five, four, or one, four, five works for the, the flats as well, or for the minors as well. So if we had a song in E minor, then this uh, A minor ends up being our fourth and our B minor ends up being our fifth. Hmm. Interesting. So that's a huge, huge amount of information I've just given you in one go. Um, feel free to pester me this week about more details. Like I said, I am gonna be passing this recording on around so that you have it, you can listen to it again. Um, but that's, that is literally just 
the core. And I made kind of a comment here about memorization. Um, I have most of this memorized just because I use it constantly. But if it's something you don't use regularly, you tend not to remember things. But if you look at a lot of songs, and that's what we're getting into right away is straight to music. We did flip, flop, flat, right? Uh, I'm gonna change colors again. Just close that can, let's go to a purple. Yeah, nice stuff. <laughs> okay, so we said that was a C, F, G7. How many of you think you're gonna be able to remember that? You know, tomorrow morning, it's it's probably still gonna be in your head. We see uh, C, F, and G7 in a lot of songs that even aren't in the 12 bar blues. Uh, to be honest, my first guitar method book, actually in the back where it gave you, me all the chords, it would give me the list of chords, you know, C, G, all the way down. And then it would give me the chord chart for the one, four, five, so that I could practice going from the one, four, five, because it's so common, right? Um, and that's really kind of going to be the key to memorization for some of this is just repetition. Every time you get a new song, just, just try something, just, you know, look at it, play it, study it. And then I guarantee you next week, you'll remember, oh yeah, that's the chord progression, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so d can anybody else think of any other songs that sound like 12 bar blues to you? The San Francisco blues or what? 12 bar blues. Oh, you mean what? What do you, what, can, can you think of any other songs? Like San Francisco blues, Bay blues or something? Is that it? I don't know if I've heard that one. Oh, really? I probably have and I just can't think of it right now. Is Folsom Prison? Yeah, a lot of Johnny Cash actually oh, is. Uh, in, in a 12 bar blues style. And, and certainly when you listen to older style country and older style blues, you can really hear kind of that common root. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I'm just gonna write generally Johnny Cash. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I spelled that wrong. It's like that, isn't yeah. it? And two ends? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's not two ends, I don't think. There is one song in our book that um, I've pulled out for, for one of my students. It's uh, Stuck in the Middle with You. Oh, yeah. What was it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, it's got the variations in it. It's got um, a B flat thrown in, but it's it still very much follows that um, chord progression. So there's a lot. I mean, I could spend a lot of time here. How about uh, Sweet Home Chicago? Oh, yeah. And we're going to get to that right away. And I'm looking at this land is your land. I'm just cheating here. I'm just looking at the chord. C, F, C, G, 7, C. F, C. Yeah. Yeah, it's everywhere. That's what I mean. Like it is. It's songs that you don't really think that are bluesy, but they're using those chords, you know? Yep. Um, you're taking a very here. old form of music. Yeah. And you're seeing the progression of it through, through time, through decades, through genres. Um, it's become something that's just so pleasing to our ear that uh, you're right. We don't even think about it anymore. So I didn't actually intend for this page to be uh, blank here, but I'm glad it is actually, because feel free to write down, uh, you know, as you go through your songbooks from your, your clubs, you know, you're gonna see a lot of music that really fits that form. And as I said, it's a great, great way to learn some of these progressions because, you know, okay, we did this one, key of C. We know now, 
yeah. what the pattern is, what the form is, 12 bar blues, and we know how to play it in C. Oh yeah, I was just looking at that midnight special. Midnight set, yeah, a lot yeah, of that, Putty Ledbetter yeah. is yeah. Uh, 12 bar blues. Yeah. So, oh. so Patty, here's, here's a question I have. Yeah. So we could theoretically, with this lovely diagram you gave of the circle of fourths and fifths, yeah. we could actually transpose that midnight special into a different key, right? We could. Quite easily. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. We could bump that back down to a C if we wanted or yeah. to an F yeah. just based on doing this. I didn't want to burn anybody's brain on a Sunday by trying yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, no, own. that's great. That's great. Just looking at it, it makes sense to me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nicer too than sometimes, you know, like throwing a capo on and then doing the chords that you're used to. Well, if, if you just know the key, why not just play it? Right? Pro provided that it's not some funky chord like, you know, these B. Well, B isn't bad, but yeah, F sharp is. Yeah, you get into some funny areas. So, I say we get back to the music. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. I do. even have a, even have Amazing Grace. I noticed C, F, C, yeah. G7, C, F, C, G7. That definitely follows the same pattern. Who, who think? <laughs> it would be like that. Oh, well. All right. So is that legible? That's good. Yeah. All right. So I'll get everybody to mute. And let's do some midnight special. All right. I think everybody, everybody's learned where their buttons are. So, oh, that sounded odd. All right, so this is a little on the low side, but I kept it in a little bit more of an original key. One, two. Well, you wake up in the morning, hear the supper bell ring. They march you to the table to see the same old thing. Ain't no food upon the table and no pork up in the pan. Better not complain, boy, or you're in trouble with the man. Let the midnight special shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine an ever loving light on me. Young Cumber, Miss Rosie, high loving world, did you know? By the way, she wears her apron. And the clothes she wore, umbrella on her shoulder, piece of paper in her hand. She comes to see the governor, she wants to free her man. Let the midnight special shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine an ever loving light on me. Stay on that G. G, 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 G. Okay, if you're ever in Houston, you better do right. You better not gamble. You better not fight. Oh, the sheriff will arrest you, and the boys will bring you down. The next thing you know, boy, you're penitentiary bound. Let the midnight special. Shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine an ever loving light on me. Again, let the midnight special shine a light on me. Let the midnight special shine an ever loving light on me. So, this one. Has a little bit of a variation, right? Um, so actually, there's a G here. We're kind of going, you know, from our uh, root chord. We're going right away to the, with that variation. Remember how I said this four, and then we go back to our root. This, we don't have a D7. I don't know why. It, 
it went in the, the original that I was listening to sounds better with the D. And then instead of going to our fourth, we're back to our root. So variations are there. They're nothing to be scared of, but it still follows that very basic pattern. Now you're welcome to um, uh, unmute yourselves because there's an actual error in this song, the way that I um, printed it off of the computer, off of the website. We're gonna go through this really quickly together. The E7, you can see it's all in sevens. And uh, actually for, so you know, the number of chords on the side actually has more to do with uh, this um, intro. We're not, we're gonna skip the intro. And we're just gonna worry about the actual chords that are here. So if you wanna listen to me play the first, um, first bar, or, sorry, the first uh, chorus here, and tell me if you can hear where the mistake is. Okay, I'll play all four lines. Oh, baby, don't you wanna go? To the land of California, to my sweet home, Chicago. I can't even do it right. Where's the mistake? Didn't you do another chord in the second line? Uh, second line? Yeah. No? No, the second line was correct. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Not sure. Back to the land of California. To my sweet home, Chicago. Not, not I, a five. What? Right. There's a, there's a mistake in that last line. So we go, uh, oh. we've got our one, we've got our four, and our one. So we've got our first line, right, of our form. Yeah. And now we're going back. There's a four in here, the A7. Oh, okay. I, don't, I can't quite squeeze it in. And then the E7 back to our root. Uh, so that's the first uh, first six bars. Sorry. First uh, eight bars. But it's in the end where the problem comes in, right? We got a five here. Our B7s are five. Mm -hmm. Back to the land of California. What should that E7 be instead? Here. That's the wrong one. Does anybody? So if we're going, uh, if our last line of our, back to the top for oh, okay. Right, this is the I, line that's I, problematic. Oh, okay. <clears throat> we missed the fourth? Right. Fourth chord, okay. For some reason, whoever uh, did this arrangement, Oh, okay. They missed that fourth. I don't know why. Yeah. And it sounds odd. So this should be an A7. Mm -hmm. And then our E7 comes back up here. And it's like that throughout the song. And I actually oh. listened to the, uh, very ancient recording that um, Robert Johnson has of this that's up on YouTube. And he plays it with that A7 and E7 at the end. Oh, don't ask me why. It might have just been a mistake that they didn't think about. I know sometimes when I start, you know, writing up a song, if I don't play it as I go, then I make mistakes like that. Yeah. Ooh, interesting. So the chords for this is easy. We'll play it all together. That's uh, just the E7, A7. And I know that B7 is kind of a pain for some of us. Um, it is a bar chord. If you struggle with bar chords, uh, feel free to yeah, uh, put as many fingers down as you can and just strum those strings. Um, I can't think of an easier way of doing B7 that isn't a bar chord. But. On my um, finger chart for B7, I've got at the second fret, 
you go diagonally. Oh yes, I have seen that. Um, that's that's easier. It kind of looks like the E7 form. Or the E minor form. E minor, right. E, yeah, minor, e minor form, sorry. yeah. Uh, yeah, second fret, da, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was like this. Is that kind of what it looks like? From the second fret. Oh, from the second fret? Yeah. 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 yeah, that's it. That's kind yeah. of a cheating way of doing it, but yeah. Pretty yeah. neat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very close. It's just a different inversion, but so that that's definitely another another option. Thank you for reminding me about that one. I have it circled on my sheet. <laughs> nice. I hate figure core cores like that. I know, I know they're you tough. Know me. And so I have my days too where I, I struggle to do it, but all right, let's try this. I'll get everybody muted again. And I know this can be a little bit wordy in certain areas. Just uh, bear with me. Do, do your best on your end and ignore my mumbling. All right. Oh, baby, don't you want to go? Back to the land of California, sweet home, Chicago. Doesn't that sound better? Oh, baby, don't you want to go? Oh, baby, don't you want to go? Back to the land of California, sweet home. Chicago. Now one and one is two. Two and two is four. I'm heavy loaded, baby, and booked. I gotta go crying, babe. Honey, don't you wanna go? Back to the land of California. Sweet home. Chicago. See, I even made that mistake because I don't have it written in. Keep on that E7. The two and two is four. Four and two is six. You gotta keep mucking around I'm here, friend boy. You gotta, yeah, that's wordy. Right. Baby, don't you wanna go? I should just make up my own lyrics. Back to the land of California. A7 to sweet home. Chicago. Another wordy verse. Now six and two is eight. Eight and two is ten. Friend Bush tricked you one time. She's sure gonna do it again. My crying, hey, 